President Donald Trump announced that he will be halting funding to the World Health Organization, which is probably not the best idea, to say the least, because we're all in the middle of a pandemic, in case you haven't heard. Now, the reason why this is such a stupid move is because this organization oversees international public health, and there are some smaller developing countries that may not have the governmental capacity or resources to deal with this crisis alone. So if we strip away f funding from the World Health Organization and these states around the world get less help, then uh, that doesn't just impact those developing nations. That impacts us because this is a contagious disease. It's not just like, well, um, we're fine, so you all can deal with this on your own. If they get it, we can still get it again. So this is a move that's irrational because even though we're selfish, this goes against our own self-interest. And the reason why Donald Trump is now choosing to go to war with the World Health Organization uh, seemingly is because he's accusing them of mismanaging the crisis and, you know, um, not providing us with the information. And he's basically accusing them for exactly what he is guilty of doing. It seems like he's trying to scapegoat them. And we all know that he botched this crisis. He bungled it. Had he acted sooner and listened to the experts and the warnings that he got, numerous warnings about the severity of COVID-19, we would be better off. We would not have been able to escape this pandemic, but we would have been better off. That's undeniable. So it seems like he is making this move because it's politically expedient. He wants you to blame the World Health Organization for his failures. Now, you can believe that the WHO has its own failures. That's fine. But you are not realistically going to absolve Donald Trump if you want to be taken seriously, because he is largely to blame for the severity of the crisis here in the United States. Now, on top of that, at a time when Americans desperately need help, they're losing their jobs, people are applying for unemployment in record numbers, this idiot decided that he would do something that is in his own self-interest that might delay the stimulus checks going out to people. It's already bad enough that these one-time $1,200 checks from the IRS are just crumbs. But in times of crisis, even crumbs are better than nothing, right? So people need this immediately. But because he's a narcissist, because he wants to make sure that he's able to gain something from this politically, he is ordering the IRS write his name on these checks. Now, this is unprecedented because the IRS is an agency that's supposed to be nonpartisan and apolitical. So for him to do this, not only is it unprecedented, but it is incredibly selfish. It is, you know, a Machiavellian political tactic, but unfortunately, it is one that I think will benefit him. So for more on this, we go to Daniel Villarreal of Newsweek, who reports late Monday evening, the U.S. Treasury Department ordered the Internal Revenue Service to print President Donald Trump's name on the stimulus checks it is sending to millions of Americans nationwide, reports the Washington Post. The Treasury Department's order could cause the checks to be delayed by several days or longer, as senior agency officials told the publication. The unprecedented decision will mark the first time in history that a president's name has ever appeared on an IRS disbursement. Usually, presidents' names don't appear on checks issued by the Treasury Department in order to keep such payments nonpartisan. His name will appear on the memo line appearing left side of the stimulus check. Administration officials who spoke anonymously because they weren't authorized to publicly discuss the matter said that Trump had originally asked Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin to allow him to formally sign the checks, but the president isn't legally authorized to do so. So this is genuinely embarrassing like this is a michael scott thing to do he is unwilling to allow americans to have anything unless he can personally benefit from it politically he doesn't care about americans he's willing to delay the stimulus checks that they desperately need now also he can take credit for it which will help him in november 
And he already asked advisors why we can't just let COVID-19, quote, wash over Americans, which would kill them. So it's obvious because he was afraid that the suffering economy wouldn't bode well for his reelection chances. So this is all about him. It's always been about him. That's why he chose to run for president. And all of that populist rhetoric was nothing more than political theater. Donald Trump is a reality television show star. He's a showman. He doesn't care about you, he cares about himself and himself only, and if you believe that he actually does care about you, well then, congratulations, you've been duped by marketing, and you are being taken advantage of. You're like a sheep being led to the slaughter. But the saddest part about this is that this is probably going to help Donald Trump substantially, because most Americans who are voting, they probably won't know that, you know, Donald Trump did this huge thing to delay the stimulus checks as an obvious you know, partisan political ploy. So they're going to see that the president gave them $1,200 because they're going to see his name on that check and they're going to likely return the favor by voting for him in hopes that he'll give them more money that they desperately need currently. Because even though you and I are, you know, uh, glued to the news and we follow politics really closely, the average American doesn't have time for that. They don't have time for that. And even if they're laid off and they have more time technically to pay attention to these types of news stories. You know, when you're unemployed, it's not the funnest situation because, you know, you can easily fall victim to uh, diseases of despair where you are depressed and you just kind of tune out the world around you. So they may not know and they may, you know, um, help Trump by thinking he gave them money and then they might vote for him. Marianne Williamson, I think, put it best. He didn't simply say he has absolute power. Now his name will be printed on every bailout check, and there are tens of millions of Americans who are literally going to think he personally sent it to them. Don't kid yourself. They'll want to vote for him in order to say thank you. And she's exactly correct here. It's shameless. It's overtly political. But this has the potential to be really effective. This is an effective strategy deployed in a lot of developing and um, third world countries that are run by authoritarian governments. You know, political parties don't necessarily offer policy concessions to voters once they're in power, but sometimes they'll do something as simple as delivering groceries to constituents and make sure that the party logo or emblem is on the bag of groceries or box of grocery groceries. And this works. This cultivates, you know, a sense of dependency on the party and it makes voters think, um, and even non-voters, people who don't vote in these authoritarian regimes, it makes them think that they're government is legitimate and they should acknowledge the authority of government, right? It's a means of cultivating legitimacy. It's a political ploy, but it does work. It does work. So um, I think it's incumbent on all of us to let people know that Donald Trump did not give them these checks personally, but you're not going to get to everyone. And this is probably going to help Donald Trump, which is obviously why he's doing it. But here's the thing, this this tells you a lot about Donald Trump and why he actually doesn't care about people. Because if he actually wanted to help the American people and lift millions of people out of poverty, he's in a position of power right now to where he can actually do that. But what has he chosen to do? Give tax cuts to him and his rich friends, elites, ramp up the drone wars, and now that he's offering you crumbs... He wants to jump in front of the cameras and take all the credit for it. When where has he been all of this time? Where has he been? People are losing their health insurance because of him. People are dying because they don't have health care. He's doing nothing because of that. And now he wants to take credit when it's convenient. Despicable. This person is a narcissist of the highest order, and he cares about nobody but himself, and he is unwilling to take any action whatsoever to help the American people unless he knows that there's going to be some benefit politically for him. Disgusting. Subscribe if you like this video, folks. Mike's tremendous, and he's doing a really, really good job. Many people are telling me about how wonderful the Humanist Report is. Bigly.